I hope you found Lesson 1, Part A helpful. I also hope you are enjoying the course, sharing with your classmates, and collaborating with them in our communal learning. Before we move on to Part B, let us review quickly what we covered in Part A. In Part A, we focused on the difference between information and intelligence, why is intelligence needed, and on the fact that analysis is the critical requirement to turn information into intelligence. We then moved on to the key components of the U.S. intelligence community, focusing on the tasks and responsibilities of those departments and agencies listed in Part A. We now move on to Part B. In Part B, we covered the intelligence cycle, a tip for success. Whenever during the course you are asked a question that has to do with the intelligence cycle, in papers, in weekly discussions, in presentations, all we refer always refer to the seven stages. Not one, two, or three, or the one that you feel more comfortable with. Always the seven, which are identification and clarification of requirements, collection, processing and exploitation, analysis and production, dissemination, consumption, and feedback. And after this, we will do a summary of part B. In this graphic, you see the seven stages of the intelligence cycle. The circle in the center with requirements is to emphasize that all of the other stages hinge on the requirements. Stage one, identification and clarification of requirements. These are done by an IC member with authority and responsibility to establish the requirements. That individual prioritizes the requirements, communicates the requirements and priorities to the agency within the IC task to do the work, identifies the sources and methodology, such as OSINT, HUMAN, SIGINT, and others, and makes sure that the sources and methodology are in agreement. It also identifies and clarifies the policy objectives for which the intelligence is collected, and critically, the why is the intelligence collected? Why is this being done? What are the difficulties in setting the requirements? The unknown or known issues or threats that affect the requirements. The knowns, we know what they are, they are a given. The unknowns refer, given that we know this, what if? And those are important to know. At times, priorities are unclear regarding their relevance to the policy priorities. And quite often, policy makers are un unusually unclear about communicating priorities to the intelligence community. This is something that the collectors and analysts need to have in mind and try to get the policy maker be as clear as possible. Also, the lack of priorities mean that the IC operates in a vacuum. Lack of priorities also excuse process in the wrong direction. And really, most critically, the lack of priorities increases the risk of getting the intelligence and the judgments wrong. Collection of raw information and data. This stage is driven by the requirements and the priorities. The ability to collect is critical to intelligence quality and therefore whether the intelligence is actionable. Who collects information that will become intelligence? How is information collected? What is the methodology? How much information can or should be collected? When does the collector and the analyst need to stop? What is the value of the information collected? How is the information processed? What is the role of the analyst in this stage? Is the analyst impartial? 
or does he or she have an agenda? It's very critical to know exactly whether impartiality or bias exist in this process. Stage three, processing and exploitation. There is the risk of information overload. Technology-driven collection outpaces the analyst's ability to interpret and analyze. And the policy makers must determine where technology ends and the human effort begins. The models of analysis are very good, but at some point and at some level, the human brain has to go into the process. Identification of new priorities and requirements from existing intelligence, short or long-term intelligence. This means getting the information that you have, how does information affect the priorities or affect the requirements, if any? Why are the challenges in processing and exploitation? Who compiles the raw information or the data? Does the person know what the person is doing? When is enough enough? How much is needed in order to produce intel actionable intelligence? Who does the analysis and what is the value? Here is extremely important to ascertain how bias may or may not be affecting the value of the intelligence and what information to share with which agency. Here we have the conundrum of the intelligence community in the U.S., the tension between the need to share and the need to know. Stage four, analysis and production. The analysis and production are driven by current and long-term intelligence. Is this something that has to be done right now, or there is more time to do a full study of analysis of the situation. Here, it is critical to differentiate between tactical analysis and strategic analysis. Tactical analysis relates to the current agenda of the policymakers. Strategic analysis relates to the long-term trends in intelligence or threats or situations. Tactical and strategic analysis require different analytical skill sets. There are analysts who are very good at quick, quick analysis and quick results. Some other analysts require more time to do more thorough and deep research and analysis. In the U.S. today, we have what is called the all-source intelligence. This means that different analytical groups address the same issues. This emphasizes collaboration and also brings to the table different points of view. What are the shortcomings of all source intelligence? There is the risk of group think or bringing the intelligence to the lowest common denominator. And also the possible concentration of resources and analysis. This may overlook other crucial areas and alternative views. Stage five, dissemination. Today, there are several dissemination pr uh, products, particularly the President's Daily Brief. It is presented by the Director of Nat National Intelligence. It's usually one page where it's a pressing issue for the President to know. May be a current situation, but it's also predictive. There is also the National Intelligence Estimate. It's produced by the Director of National Intelligence and the National Intelligence Council. That is the Quadrennial Intelligence Community Review is produced by the Office of the Director of National Intelligence. It is always scenario-based. The most current one takes the scenarios to 2025. And there are products by the DIA and the Intelligence Directorate, the J2, which are pertinent to the Department of Defense. What are the challenges to dissemination? Stover piping an agency holding onto the information for dear life. And the other one is the policymakers hoarding or selective dissemination, depending on his or her agenda. Stage six is the consumption. 
who receives the intelligence and when, who benefits and who loses. And who loses is extremely important because many times intelligence products may have the potential to embarrass somebody. So that somebody may handle that intelligence product in a way not intended originally for the use of that intelligence product. And the most important, does it require immediate action? Or is this something that is going to be passed around some selected people within the intelligence community put inside a drawer? Or what action is going to be taken? What are the challenges to consumption? I already referred briefly to this, the manipulation of findings and judgments, and also classification. There are many classifications, and in many cases, there is the situation of an open source intelligence product that may be restricted as law enforcement sensitive, and immediately it loses the open source intelligence or open source, or open source distribution and becomes restricted only to the intelligence community. In stage seven, feedback to intelligence producers. Policymakers and supervisors are usually reluctant to do this for whatever reason. But it's extremely important that the intelligence produces here what worked and why, why did not work and why. This is as critically important as what worked. What is needed for improvement? Everything needs to be improved. Nothing is perfect. Is the intelligence product useful? What made it useful? And if there is, no, is, there is no official feedback within the organization, then really the establishment of a formal feedback system is really necessary. People need to know that what they are doing, that they are doing well, what they need to improve, and most importantly, what is the purpose and usefulness of their work? What did we cover in part B? We covered the seven stages of the intelligence cycle, the need for clear requirements that lead to the creation of accurate intelligence products, the need for the establishment of priorities that respond to policymakers' needs and objectives, and the principal products that the IC delivers to the president and members of the policymaking, law enforcement, and military communities. These products contain essential information for decision makers to execute the authorities and responsibilities with which they are tasked by the U.S. Constitution, stakeholders, and the public. Thank you for attending the lecture. I hope it was useful. I will see you again on Unit 2. Good luck in your studies. Thank you.